Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yasser Fuentes, and I'm a sales engineer for Cloud and MSP at Bitdefender. Um, today, I'm here with Dylan Jensen from Perch to show you um, our capabilities and how is it that through our integration, we can protect your environment. Um, at the beginning, I will perform a Bitdefender introduction to show you what is it that we uh, are capable of. I will give you a little bit of insights on the threat landscape, and then we're gonna jump into a live demo from Bitdefender and also Perch side. Without further ado, um, let's get started. So, uh, what is Bitdefender or who's Bitdefender? So this is my definition from a technical standpoint. And um, it's because our concept uh, when it comes to management, uh, configuration, deployment is keep it simple. However, that doesn't mean that we are simpler than anybody else in the market. Now, if we go to the facts, uh, Bitdefender has been around since 2001. Uh, our company is a technology company, 100%. That means that uh, more than half of our employees are either engineers or are part of the R&D um, staff. Um, we have a uh, um, big uh, presence when it comes to uh, technology partners uh, and OEM partners. Uh, that's the reason why more than 38% uh, of the cybersecurity firms out there, they use Bitdefender capabilities or, or, or uh, intelligence under the hood. Um, and then uh, up today, we have presence in more than 150 countries, protecting around 600 million endpoints and um, I would say devices worldwide. Um, so if you ask me, who is Bitdefender? What is it that we bring to the table in terms of value? I would say we are an innovator. Um, almost uh, every month since my tenure with the company, um, I seen a new product coming up, a new feature being released or being enhanced. So this is a nonstop at Bitdefender. And also um, we proudly say that we provide you with that perfect balance between efficacy and performance, which translates into, we are here to prevent and detect everything that we should, but at the same time, we're never gonna be disruptive on your production environment. Um, if we talk about awards, um, there's many that I can share with you, but um, I would like to go over this one since it's more aligned with the presentation that we're trying to share today. And this is our results from the last participation in the MITRE um, um, attack framework uh, test. We basically participated there with uh, different top inbreed vendors and we perform at the top level. We, are actually, we were actually rated as the most complete uh, cyber attack kill chain coverage. And this is because we can prevent, uh, detect and prevent any attack from early stages to the most uh, sophisticated type of techniques. Uh, now, um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, threat landscape and especially what I have prepared for today's presentation. Um, so it's not a secret for anybody that ransomware continues to be stronger um, in the in the cyberspace, we see more and more issues, uh, like for instance, the um, uh, latest attacks with uh, Garmin, uh, how is it that the entire company and services went down for um, almost a whole weekend, and uh, a little bit of mammoths in the, in the space uh, about what happened there. So ransomware is something that is, it, it started 30 years ago, but it came to pretty much stay, uh, and I would say for longer time. In the presentation, uh, what I have today here is the rans uh, um, ransomware called Sodin. Sodin is um, the predecessor of many campaigns out there, but the reason why I brought it today is because they uh, they've been able to even adapt to the current situation with the global pandemic, right? And what that means is, um, unlike many other ransomware campaigns, they are not only encrypting your systems, but also exfiltrating information so they can have additional means or ways to collect money from the victims. Um, they, they understand that uh, 
because of the pandemic and budget constraints in many companies, especially SMBs, they don't have budget to pay the, the, the ransom. So uh, what if I collect sensitive information from you as a victim and make you pay for it? And I'm talking about intellectual property. I'm talking about uh, classified information and even uh, personal files, right? So that's the main reason why I selected it as uh, part of today's presentation. Now, uh, how is it that we um, tackle this type of threats? How is it that we solve this issue? Well, first off, our approach is the one agent, one console, agnostic at any level. That means anywhere from Windows, Mac, Linux, um, to the data center and even the public cloud. And also we can protect IoT devices with our solutions, including uh, as well a network attach uh, storage. And besides that, we also offer services like uh, um, manage um, professional services, premium support and manage security services as well. Um, as part of the uh, offering that we have available to mitigate uh, this type of issues, especially ransomware, um, we have cloud security for MSPs, and that goes anywhere from uh, an antivirus to uh, multiple controls in a series to provide you with defense in depth that uh, goes from the surface um, with web controls, device controls, content control, all the way up to the most sophisticated controls, which don't rely on signatures. Um, we also have uh, additional services that you can um, acquire from Bitdefender depending on your environment. And that ranges anywhere from email protection to uh, security for virtualized environments, um, full disk encryption, patch management, and even EDR. Uh, there are two components here that, uh, in my opinion, they are essential for uh, these type of threats, especially uh, in the case of, uh, of the ransomware, and uh, that is ATS and EDR. Uh, ATS falls more on the uh, preventative framework that we have, and that is a combination of hyperdetect and the sandbox analyzer. Um, these two components, uh, they don't rely on signatures, and what they do is they look at the most advanced threats. Uh, like APTs, like targeted attacks, and even zero day type of threats. Um, and if um, you ask the reason why we offer this is because we see more and more uh, attacks taking over and taking place without even um, requiring any actions from the user side, right? So that's essential for you to have it today. Um, and EDR, um, we, um, see data breaches that's something that even a ransomware attack is considered to uh, as a data breach so you need to have uh, visibility on what is beyond that typical anti malware alert right well and even what how is it that you detect things that you cannot prevent so that's why edr is uh, in place right now um for the attack today, uh, I'm going to go over uh, a sequence, and the sequence is basically what you see on the screen right now. So in any attack, uh, there's a stages. The very first thing that hackers do is go over the surface uh, using multiple vectors to be able to compromise your uh, systems, right? And uh, in our case, we have multiple controls that can prevent this from happening, that can prevent uh, any threat from landing to your environment. If uh, these controls are not sufficient, then um, we have some other um, layers of protection. Now, just on that initial layer, I wanted to share with you what is it that we have in place. So if we go over the policies, um, we can show you that we have coverage anywhere from uh, firewall to prevent any attempt to footprint your network. Uh, we can implement rules here to prevent that from happening. Same is applicable to uh, network protection. So we can uh, scan secure connections. We can identify if you're trying to access to a fraudulent website or a phishing link, and even uh, create rules in this case, uh, whitelisting type of rules to regulate how is it that you access to the web, right? Uh, based on categories, based on uh, different technologies that we uh, offer. 
Um, we can also identify before you set any controls, we can identify how is it that you are doing in terms of exposures, and that's part of our risk management uh, capabilities. So basically, you can run this task on a schedule, and as soon as you run it and complete it, you can see in the risk management dashboard how exposed you are and um, uh, what issues are the ones that we found. You can, of course, mitigate these vulnerabilities uh, from this console. So, for instance, if I go to the different computers that uh, are coming as part of this report, I can click on any of them and you can see exactly how exposed they are, right? You can see vulnerabilities that Bitdefender identify and also, uh, not only that, but also being able to fix them from Bitdefender right from the same exact agent that you have implemented. Now, uh, what if um, all of these controls are not enough or are not sufficient? Uh, like I said, <clears throat> uh, that object is gonna try to make it through the file system. And in there, um, we have some other mechanism that go anywhere from the uh, anti-malware antivirus um, to the most advanced uh, signature less components like HyperDetect and the Sandbox Analyzer. Um, so if I um, switch over my environment, what I'm going to show you is just the initial part of the attack. And uh, in this case, since we talk about hardening and control layers or vector level, I'm going to try to perform a brute force attack over um, RDP. This is something that is very, very common. And the reason for that is because it's not a secret for anybody that uh, in IT, uh, you know, it's very comfortable to enable RDP to browse to your servers from your house or from wherever you are at. So um, this is very, very common. And this is something that the hackers know as well, right? So if I go ahead and try to exploit um, one of my um, endpoints here as a victim computers, you can see within seconds that um, I'm able to obtain the username and the password from that computer. Um, again, in this case, in this scenario, what I did was by bypass the policies so you can see um, the attack taking place. Uh, otherwise, it would be prevented from the very beginning. Um, if I go over this computer and I log in, even though that user was not uh, working on the computer at that time, if you look at the interface, uh, Bitdefender Endpoint Security Tools, you can see that we are detecting this attempt uh, almost in real time. And I said almost because it's milliseconds, but it happens in real time. So we are highlighting here that from that computer, which is the attacker, um, uh, a network um, attack happened, uh, more likely a brute force attack, and that's how we identify it. Now, uh, from here, I can also go ahead and do a poor scanning, right? And for that, I'm simply going to use SEMMAP, which is a pretty useful tool. And I'm going to run that on the same IP address. Uh, and for the sake of doing it quick, I'm just going to run a quick scan task. If I do that, um, you can see almost instant. You can see that I have detected that in real time as well. And we have prevented that uh, poor scanning from happening. All right. So again, at the vector level, we are um, we are all covered with Bitdefender. Now, um, in this net, in this stage that I'm going to show you is mainly with um, uh, on access uh, modules. Basically, what I'm going to do is just uh, try to um, open an email that somebody sent me uh, as a follow-up from a session that we've performed, and they're sending me a best practices guide, right? If I trust in this person, um, I can definitely go ahead and just save that guide and check it as soon as I save it. And here is where it gets pretty interesting. In my case, of course, I put it password protected because it's malicious. Otherwise, it will be deleted by Bitdefender instantly. And in this case, uh, I'm going to run this file. So I'm going to open the guide to see exactly what happened. This is what a typical end user would do on any environment. Um, and even though Word uh, is going to show you some warnings about the macros, 
let's be honest, nobody reads, nobody, uh, you know, uh, stop to, to read what the Macros warnings is saying. It's just uh, skip it and let it run. That's exactly what I'm going to do here uh, as soon as the document open. And um, in this particular uh, type of attack, what I did is I embedded malicious code uh, into the macros using Visual Basic. And what that does is basically go to a command and control center that I have within the same network to download the payload that is going to uh, compromise this system. So let's give it a couple of um, seconds while that document opens and we can showcase the attack. So in this um, initial attack, uh, what I'm going to showcase here is a typical uh, scenario where a user uh, sends you an email, uh, you pretty much with some guides, then you go ahead since you trust that user, uh, it might be an impersonator, but since you know him or her, you went ahead and opening the, gu uh, the guides and then um, here, as you could see, Microsoft uh, Word is warning you about macros, but again, nobody reads this. Uh, the user ultimately what he wants is to just to go over the guide and check it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on enable editing and then enable the content. And as soon as I do that, um, I'm going to open the Bit Defender interface. One more time, uh, I set it to permissive mode, pretty much to allow the attack to take place. So you can see how the system gets compromised and how is it that we detect that in our uh, end. As you could see, all the modules that we have in place have been detecting that. So that means that we can prevent it on the spot. Um, but uh, notice that the guide that I had, which was a Word, Word document, is already encrypted and it's already compromised, right? That's because of sudden took place. You can actually find the readme file here. And in a couple of uh, seconds, if not a minute or so, you're going to see how the screen in the back changes uh, to the screen, uh, to the wallpaper from uh, sudden. Now, let's see what happens on the Bitdefender Gravity Zone Control Center, especially on EDR. So if we switch to incidents, uh, especially to review, where is the information about things that we can prevent uh, or incidents that we can prevent, you can open uh, the incident, go over the root cause analysis, and this is exactly what happened. So this computer, which is uh, my Windows 10 uh, Big Team computer, uh, open the Explorer, then access to this uh, particular guide. And then you can see how um, a power shell was invoked. Um, how is it that then it downloaded a payload to the system, which is this file right here, and then the fireworks started. So you can see how the files get encrypted, even the readme file with the instructions about how to recover or how to uh, restore your files if you pay a ransom. Now, uh, also here, Bitdefender uh, is giving you a really good perspective, and I would say is the main source of truth for any incident uh, of this nature that you had. Um, and it's the forensic report based on the sandbox analyzer. Uh, again, this is a next gen component that we have, uh, which doesn't rely on signatures, but on machine learning AI. And if you open that report, you can see the main um, source of truth or information about what this file is intended to do. Um, here we're saying that it's ransomware. Um, this is just a brief description of it. Um, we have all the detections that we have in place, and also you can see some attributes. Now, if you switch over MITRE techniques, which is what I shared with you at the very beginning, you can see here some stages like execution, of course, is a payload. Um, if you click on it, you can see examples of how is it that it executes, how is it that it uh, manipulated uh, PowerShell in order to encrypt the system, and also how is it that it tried to persist on the system. You can also see some defense evasion techniques and even graphical representation of this subject uh, in action uh, from the moment that it was executed to how many changes it performed and even outbound connections to command and control center uh, to retrieve uh, keys. Um, and then last but not the least here, you can confirm uh, that this is sorting by the screenshot. If I go back to that computer, it's exactly the same as you see here on the back. Background. From our end uh, with EDR, 
we could take uh, any actions, uh, even prevent this um, prior to get to the EDR. Uh, that means that you know we have all preventative controls from the anti malware all the way up to um, the most advanced uh, controls to be able to uh, prevent this for you without any further action. But in the case of uh, elusive threats, you can definitely come here. And if you see that that process is somehow invoking PowerShell, um, you can go ahead and just uh, kill that process uh, on the spot. You can also go ahead and block list uh, the payload and the malicious file. I could do this from the very beginning by just selecting it and add it to a block list if it's still an execution. Um, and I can also, if it's a false positive, uh, even the payload, I can go ahead and just add an exception from our EDR. I can also isolate the system, which uh, is already isolated. Uh, that means no communication within the local network and the same applicable to the internet. And if I go over the remote connection here, I can validate exactly what is going on in there. I can also see um, you know, any running processes. What is gonna happen now is we're gonna open a, um, uh, a shell remote session, and that's how you can actually validate uh, if there's any issues on that computer. Um, so after this, um, of course, uh, it might be in the process of restoring, that's why that connection failed. But after this, you can go ahead and just restore the connection to the internet, and then uh, take your notes and change the incident status. So that's how we do it. Um, we can also, uh, if in the case that you're not in front of the console, we can also alert you about this. You can navigate to our um, alerts or notifications. And anytime there is a new incident, you can enter your email here and we can send you information about that particular uh, incident that was created. Now, uh, this is the uh, scenario number one. The second scenario that I want to cover with you here is without any actions from the user. So that means that I'm going to run an attack here that uh, in which the user doesn't have to open any Word document. He doesn't have to uh, perform pretty much any actions to get compromised. Uh, for that, I'm going to use uh, Windows 7 uh, 64 bits operating system or computer. And the reason why I'm using the system is not only because it's more vulnerable, but also because um, we see a lot of customers and a lot of uh, partners still using this, especially financial institution, point of sales, ATMs, embedded devices. So even though it's a non-supported operating system, we still see a lot of companies still using these systems. Um, so I'm going to go over my um, Kali Linux, uh, which is the attacker computer. And uh, in this case, I'm going to use uh, a different type of attack. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, go over uh, Kali Linux and um, Metasploit, which is the, the console that I'm using. And the type of attack that I will use is called uh, Eternal Blue double pulser. This is uh, pretty effective, especially on this type of vulnerable systems. And what it does is it allows a reverse uh, session or an interpreter session through which the attacker can go ahead and uh, invoke some other processes in order to compromise the system. All of this can be run in a scripted fashion. <clears throat> I'm just doing it manually here for the sake of demonstrating what happened on every single stage. So this is the exploit again. This is the payload that I'm gonna use. For the injection, uh, I'm going to uh, pick lsas.exe, uh, and uh, for the um, for the targets, I'm going to select uh, my remote uh, victim's IP address, which is uh, this one, and I'm going to select mine as the local host, right? Um, after this is done, I can simply show you the options and um, let me just show you the options here. And uh, you can see pretty much everything that I have selected. So now it's time to uh, run the show. 
Um, notice that in this type of attack, um, there's some sort of persistence. So you might be able to see some timeout um, uh, in trying to connect to the victims. That's going to happen, but it's going to persist uh, until it gets connected. So let's give it a couple of seconds. Um, as you can see now, the um, the uh, exploit was conducted, so that means that the session is about to open, and now we have it. Now, if I go over this system and I open the Bitdefender interface, you might be able to see that uh, attack attempt being logged by the endpoint protection and is right here. So we're saying that uh, uh, the advanced threat control has detected an exploit and you can see it here. And if you want to see more details about the session and how is it that we exploited this based on which vulnerability, here it is. So it's uh, Eternal Blue, the same one that was used for uh, WannaCry and the same one that we continue to see in many systems uh, worldwide. So now from here, what I'm gonna do is just execute uh, command prompt basically to uh, be able to connect to the command and control center and download the payload. So this is exactly what I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm going to just uh, paste this command and as soon as the, uh, the CMD is open, <clears throat> I can go ahead and just um, connect to my command and control center. So I'm going to use the FTP client and this is the IP address of uh, my command and control center, which is uh, in the local network. For my um, for my FTP, I'm logging as anonymous, and as soon as I log in, uh, you can see here that I'm in the public uh, folder. So now what I'm going to do is, since this is my system, I already know what the files are. I'm going to browse through where I have the payload. In this case, this is the route samples, and I'm going to go to sodding, which is the uh, main character that we're using today. And here is where I have the samples. Now, if I list the files there, you can see that sodding, which is the payload, is there. So now I'm going to use the command get to download that file in this folder. Um, and then run it. Notice that I'm in Windows, in C Windows System 32, right? So there is where I'm going to download this uh, particular file. And then from here, I can just go ahead and say bye to my connection to the FTP since I'm already done. And now it's time for me to run the payload. Um, so I'm going to put here sodding.exe and I'm going to run that silently, so that way the user doesn't know what is going on. Of course, if you have a solution like Bitdefender, uh, you can see in the back end that, uh, you know, uh, something is going on, something is taking place. That's why it's so important to involve the end user in the NCM management process so they can see exactly and report whenever something is taking place. But notice that no action from the user is required. Um, and now the system is compromised. Now you can see the readme file here with the notes. And if we go over Gravity Sun um, control center, especially on the EDR, <clears throat> we will be able to see that incident created here. So this is pretty much all the stages of the attack from beginning to the end, uh, the process that I uh, pretty much uh, exploited or used, um, the process where um, I get access to the system to open that reverse um, or meterpreter session, and then how I connected to the FTP, how I downloaded the payload and compromised that system. As soon as this uh, attack uh, concludes, you'll be able to see um, more information on it, especially on the payload. So it's still aggregating more data. And now you can see the payload right here. Now you can see that uh, forensic report that I referred to, which is actually open here from the previous uh, scenario that I run, and uh, where you can confirm that this is in fact uh, malicious. From here, uh, again, I can uh, take action. I can add that file to a block list. I can add it as an exception. I can kill any processes that are uh, already running on that system. 
And I can even isolate this endpoint from the network. Uh, in this case, just to showcase the isolation, uh, when I connect to the host, since that computer is not connected to the internet, um, it still will keep communication with our control center. And then from there, you can go ahead and just uh, connect to it to validate if there's any leftovers on the system. Uh, in this case, again, um, since the system is restoring, it might fail. But basically what it opens is just a command prompt uh, session so you can validate that. Um, so that's pretty much it from my end. So now we can go back to uh, Dylan's presentation and demo. Dylan, the floor is yours. Thanks, Yazer, for that, that presentation. That was a good presentation. So today we're going to be talking about Perch as well. Now, we're going to show you the value in, in the cohesity between Perch and Bitdefender, how we can also reduce your risk, um, increase your security posture a little bit. Perch is a co-managed threat detection platform. We are definitely geared for the MSPs, but this is a scalable product that you can bring to the enterprise. You can also bring it to uh, a mom pop shop that you want to get security into. Now, you can see on my screen right here, I kind of have a how Perch works document. Really what Perch is, is a co-managed SIM platform backed with a security operations center, um, a team of analysts that's going through that SIM, watching all the events that are coming in. And you can see we get a lot of sources, our logs from different sources like our, our workstation and servers all the way down to our cloud integrations where we actually work with our cybersecurity peers like Bitdefender um, to bring in information to review, uh, get a team of analysts to review what's going on when there's a malware event within uh, Bitdefender just so we can increase our, increase our rate and our efficiency uh, into delivering security events to our customers. So I'm gonna. It'll be a good time to cut that out, and then what I will do is show the perch platform now. All right. Let me close this. All right. So if you saw on that previous screen, um, we actually had a perch web app. Now perch is two things. It's both a product and then also a service that we deliver to our customers. The product being the SIM platform that you can actually log into. You can actually interact with our, our SOC. You can see events that our SOC is investigated and triaged um, in full transparency. Uh, I'll go to my settings page right here and you can actually see our level of integrations. We have quite the large list. We're, we're averaging a pretty, pretty good rate in developing these, usually about a rate of four a month. But in this instance, we partner with Bitdefender, our EDR um, partners, to deliver really good uh, security to our customers. So one of the use case for having Bitdefender integrated with Perch is maybe you don't have a, the bandwidth or maybe you don't have the staff to be going through all the alerts generated within the Bitdefender platform. That's perfect. You get the Perch platform. Now, Perch, we can actually bring in logs from O365 and Bitdefender firewall logs. So we're not just looking at one specific um, tool and we're gonna be going through all the alerts generated by those different different uh, tool sets. So for instance, if Bitdefender finds a nasty piece of ransomware like they did earlier in this, this demo, what we would do with this integration is have our SOC get in there and investigate that, that incident. Where did, this, where did this piece of malware come from? Did it come through an email service like O365 or G Suite? Um, what did it do once it was landed on the Bitdefender device? Did it try to go anywhere else that Bitdefender might not have been installed, right? That visibility is always key uh, to getting to a really good security posture. So keep in mind, the Perch platform is that detection platform. Now to have really good security, you need to have both elements to it. Bitdefender, they're going to be the prevention side of the house, which they're going to be your first line of defense. Perch is going to be the detection platform with those um, deliverables and that SOC backing everything behind it. Now, when we actually talk about the Perch platform, one of the ways you can actually use Perch as a log aggregation platform. So let's say maybe you have a, uh, a for instance, you see an incident within Bitdefender. What our SOC is going to do on the back end is they're going to correlate that incident between firewall logs, Bitdefender logs, O365 incidents that we're seeing for that specific customer. They're, with that correlation, it really allows them to paint a really good picture around what is it, what exactly is going on here. 
Now you can see we have a really good log aggregation tech technology under the hood. Now something else that makes Perch really sticky with our customers is the ability for us to deliver dashboards. We have a lot of the canned dashboards. This one in, for instance, is an O365 um, product specific dashboard where it shows all the, uh, all the logins uh, specifically done across O365 across a 30 day time span. We can even go back a year and uncover potentially compromised accounts within O365 just by looking at this dashboard and saying, no, nobody should be logging in from outside of the US for our organization. We don't have any, any business need to be logging in from other countries. All right, so these are gonna be quick wins that we can do in security to bring that, that security posture up a little bit and reduce that risk. Now, another, another benefit to the Perch platform is we can actually build out rule sets to detect anything within, um, within, within the environment. So potential DDoS attacks on the firewall, potential malware that we're uncovering. Um, we can also detect compromised accounts within O365. These are rule sets that our customers usually work with us to get built out according to whatever their tech stack might look like. Now, we have a lot of other dashboards too that we can, that we can deliver to our customers. A lot of tech-specific ones like Windows, that Office 365, we even have Mac and even Bitdefender dashboards as well. Um, what we can do is correlate or consolidate that into one deliverable that we can give to our customers. So typically with our Perch customers, we work with them to get uh, a dashboard built out that fits their need. So they don't need to become a Perch dashboard building expert to get a really good deliverable that they, that they can get under the hood. All right. So that's kind of the, the real quick overview. Um. So thank you so much, Dylan, for your presentation. That was pretty impressive, pretty awesome. Um, again, if um, you want to learn more about our solutions, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to your account executive so we can set you up with a trial, um, help you out with the demo or POC. And um, that way you can take advantage of everything that you have seen in this presentation. Thank you so much.